My name is Miguel Rosas, Wall Educator, and today I'm going to show you guys how to achieve this fade using the Wall Detailer LI, so stay tuned. So what we're going to do here is we're going to insert the trimmer going upwards and then we angle it out down below. Press it nice and tight against the head and as you're going up, angle it backwards. So we're just going to continue doing that all the way to the back. This is a technique that takes some time to get down. So I would say that this is a little bit more of an advanced technique. But as you can notice, I'm literally fading with the detailer. Right here on the beard, we're going to turn the blade around and just feather downwards right into the beard. So down and below, what we're going to do is apply pressure. And as you're going up, angle it backwards and graze the hair above it. And that's how you create that blend. We're going to go ahead and do some, uh, some clipper over comb work here to blend this in with the trimmers. Just kind of follow along with me what I'm doing here. What makes these, these trimmers so special for me personally is just the fact that I can do this type of, this type of work, you know, while I'm cutting. It's, for me, it's just faster because I don't have to constantly, constantly be switching out guards and uh, you know just anytime you switch the guard out it just takes time I mean if you can do the majority of the work with your trimmer it's gonna make the rest of your job so much more easier and let's go ahead and continue what I was showing you around here to the other side so right in here apply pressure and as you're going up just angle the trimmer back and graze up into that hair Now, real quick, just for any of those out there who don't really know a whole lot about the trimmer, we have a 100 minute runtime. Okay? We have a rotary motor, lithium ion battery, and this trimmer does come with a docking station. So, when you're not using the trimmer, you will have it sitting in the docking station and it will be charging while you're not using it. So essentially, the trimmer never really dies. I mean, 100, 100 minutes of, of runtime is pretty good. You're not necessarily going to have to really use it for that long at one time. So it's a really nice trimmer. Very strong rotary motor in it. Now, when I am doing my, my, uh, my fading techniques with my trimmer, my intention isn't to just use this for the whole haircut and I honestly think that I'm going to do the whole haircut just using the trimmer. This is mainly just so that I can make the first part of setting my guideline, you know, just easier so that when I go to fade it in, um, it just makes my job so much easier, so much faster. So what we like to call this is soft line fading. Just because you're not putting that hard line in there, it's more of a soft line. So right in here where I see these, these shadows, we're just gonna kinda graze the hair right down in there, angle your blade backwards, and just try to blend out as much as you possibly can right now, because we're always gonna come back with our, with our wall magic clips and really blend that out. But this just makes our job so much easier. So we're going to start off on the left hand side of his head using our soft line fading technique. And rather than just going in and putting that hard guideline around the whole head. So see some people like to go in like that and put that line all the way around the head. For me, when you do that, it just takes it so much longer to get that to get that line out. So what we're gonna do instead of doing that is we're gonna just go straight up 
we're gonna apply our pressure down below. So I want you to apply pressure almost where you can see the scalp almost overlapping that blade. So go ahead and apply your pressure down below. And as we're going up, we're gonna kind of just re-angle our trimmer so it's kind of angled backwards. And we're gonna bring it out and graze up into that hair above. And that's how you fade with these trimmers. So you can kind of see there, look at that blend. I'm actually creating a full blend with just the trimmers. So imagine being able to do that for a whole haircut. How much time are you gonna save? How much, you know, how many more haircuts in a day are you gonna be able to knock out when you're able to fade with your trimmers? You know, what makes it so easy for me to, to be able to, to achieve this technique is the simple fact, the type of technology that is, that is in this uh, motor, you know? The rotary motor, the, uh, the TY blade, it just makes it so much easier for me to do that. Let's get back to what I'm doing here though. You can just tell, like right in here, I'm kind of angling my trimmer back and we're just going right up into this hair up, the, up above. Now if you want, you can, on the other side, I did some clipper over comb work where I did do some clipper over comb in this. So you can clipper over comb all that if you want. I mean, you, you could if you wanted to do a full fade with these. But we have other tools that we're gonna to use to really obviously, you know, butter up the rest of this fade, get it nice. We're gonna go ahead and do the same technique right over here. Apply your pressure down below. And as you're going up, graze into the hair that's above it. And this is how you create a soft line fade. So now when I go to get my, my magic clips out, it's gonna make my job so easy. So right here, apply the pressure down below as we get to the area where we want that blend to be. Relieve the pressure and go up into that hair and just kind of graze up over the hair up above. So we've, we've, uh, we've met the, the back side of the head where we uh, left off on the other side. And now I'm just kind of making sure that everything's kind of coming together here in the middle. Because again, you want to kind of still uh, approach this as, you know, setting your guide. Some people, uh, you know, at first it's going to be a little hard for some of you guys to really, uh, you know, get the blend this good with just your trimmers. But with some practice, um, it, it really will get better and better and make your job way easier later on. I'm gonna go ahead and reach for my, uh, my cordless wall magic clips. And with the blade all the way opened, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it flat right in here. And I'm gonna do the same technique that I was doing with my trimmers. I'm gonna lay it flat. But as I get into this area right in here, this transitional area by the parietal ridge, I just angle my, my clippers backwards and I blend into that hair above. So I'm gonna do some clipper over comb. One of the things that I'm doing when I clip her over comb, I like to, when I run my, when I run my, my blade across the comb, I like to run it across the comb at a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle. Especially up in the area where the hair is a little bit longer in the transition area. The transition area is the area between the, right in here, it's the area that meets the fade with the hair on top that's longer. So we're gonna go ahead and knock all this down, this bulky stuff up above. And you can kind of see down below some of the, some of the lines of demarcation that we need to go back and polish. Make sure you guys uh, leave some comments 
we're going to be here answering your questions. You know, what kind of, where can you order the tools at? You know, you can go to wallpro.com, check us out. That's the website. Find us on Instagram under wallpro. Okay, so here, you can see some lines of demarcation right in here. I'm gonna tilt his head this way, I'm gonna set my clipper at a 90 degree angle, and I'm gonna rake at a 90 degree angle, maybe only about a half an inch, or maybe only a quarter of an inch. So using a 90 degree angle, I'm gonna rake upwards. Not C-scoop, make sure that you don't C-scoop out, but it's more of a, when you rake, you need to rake it and make sure that your angle stays the same as you're going up. So right in here, I'm just gonna use my comb. I see a little shadowy area right in here. So I got my comb nice and flat in there. And I have my the uh, the lever on my on my uh, clipper is all the way open. So right in here, the head kind of sinks in. So I need to make sure that I get get this comb nice and flat right in here. Clipper over combing uh, is honestly a technique that everybody needs to master. You know, you can only use attachment combs or guards so often. You know, you can't use those for everything that you do. You ha definitely have to have your clipper over comb, your clipper over comb game down. What are you gonna do if you don't have any guards, you know? You gotta learn how to definitely master that clipper over comb just in case you do not have guards or if something breaks or you misplace it, you know you can still get the haircut done with just clipper over combing. Okay, so down below I see a little bit of a faint line, so what I'm gonna do, you can kinda see what I'm doing here. I'm using the corner of my blade. I have my I have my lever all the way closed, and I'm just using the corner of my blade just to kind of go in there and touch areas that are just a little darker than the rest. I have it open back up now. I kind of touch all the little spots that I was seeing earlier. So we're back to raking again at a 90 degree angle right in here, and I see a dark spot here. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my comb in. I'm gonna flip that hair out just like that. Put it in and flip the hair out. I do a lot of uh, a lot of raking when I cut hair. Just makes it for me. It's just it's easier instead of having to really switch out guards all the time. Go ahead and line the beard up a little bit right here. Just kind of following that natural line in the back, going straight down. Look how smooth our trimmers cut that hair away. This is my definitely one of my favorite tools. Honestly, since it came out, I haven't put it down. Um, I used to have, you know, the corded detailer, but ever since this uh, cordless detailer came out, the LI, I honestly have not touched my corded detailer once. And I really love this tool so much. Go ahead and chop right underneath here a little bit, get some of this, get them a nice uh, straight line underneath. Okay, just kind of following the natural uh, hairline down below. that and you don't have to press in too hard 
being really gentle on, this, on, the, on the pressure that we're using. I actually have mine, mine zero gap, but, I, but when, they, uh, when, you, when you purchase them, they come out of the box actually pretty close already. You don't really have to zero gap them. I personally always like to zero gap all of my stuff though. That's just something that I do. But you do not have to zero gap them. They come out of the box and they get really close already. So those hair wiped away. So you can kind of really see here what we've done so far. Just using our trimmers, obviously, to set our guide. And then I did all this with clipper over comb and just angling my, my magic clips and raking. So we're gonna continue fading the hair in the back of the head. So now that we've got our first part done, we're gonna go ahead and start clipper over combing the hair that's on the back of the head. So what I do is I just put my comb in the hair flat against the head, and then I try to flip some of that hair above outwards. And when I, when I swipe my blade across my comb, I don't have it laid all the way flat. I usually have it at an angle. And by that, I'm kind of saying more at an angle like this. My taper lever is all the way open as well. Let's go ahead and continue removing the hair. I don't always try to remove so much at a time. I try to just do little bits at a time. That way I don't accidentally take off too much hair because I can always take off more later if I have to. So right in here, I'm seeing a little, some shadowy areas right in here. So we're gonna go ahead, tape the lever all the way open, kinda go in here, start removing some of these dark spots as much as possible. Right here, and then when I go up a little bit above it, I just angle the blade backwards a little and kinda graze the hair above it. It's kinda the same technique I used with my uh, detailer earlier. A lot of free handing going on, some, you know, just because uh, you're laying it flat and then up here you're kind of just pulling it back and kind of like just grazing over the hair. So right in here I'm seeing some lines of demarcation, so I'm going to bring that blade down somewhat, bring that lever down, and we're just going to use the corner of our blade just to kind of go in there and then remove some of them little shadowy areas or those lines of demarcation. And then here we go, we'll do some raking right in here at a 90 degree angle. Put our comb in. So here I'm just going to be lay I'm laying my comb in real tight against the scalp because I need to get a little closer right in here just to create a better blend. So also I'm going to bring my teeth down on my blade and this is where I'm actually going to start laying the teeth flat against the blade or against I'm sorry laying the teeth of the blade flat against the comb and then we're going to do a little bit of raking right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over a little bit, tiny bit. Just kind of attacking these little small spots down below, these little lines of demarcation, using the corner of the blade. So we're gonna focus on the spot right here. Let's, let's go ahead and start to get that a little bit more blended. So I have my blade all the way open.
And in the areas where I'm trying to get it a little closer to the head, that's where you see me actually placing my blade flat against the comb. Earlier I mentioned when I clipper over comb, I like to angle, angle my blade against the comb. So let's just kind of keep, let's just kind of uh, get it straight real fast. When I angle my blade against the comb, it's in the areas where the hair is a little longer, so it would be more up in this area. If you in fact see me laying my blade flat across the comb, it's gonna be down in areas down in here where I need to get closer. I mean, I could probably very easily pull out my one guard, put my one guard on there, and, and do some of the work that way as well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn him this way now. And we're gonna start by polishing some of these lines of demarcation down below. So right in there, I have my clipper angled at about a 45 degree actually. And now I'm gonna angle it at a 90. The difference is when you're laying it flat against the scalp, it's gonna only, it's gonna cut the amount of hair, or the hair that it's gonna leave behind is pretty much the thickness of this blade when you have it flat. When you angle it though, now it's the distance between these moving teeth and the edge of the blade. So the, the distance from the edge here to the moving teeth, if you can zoom in and see what I'm talking about there. Otherwise, when you have it flat, you're only removing the amount of hair that is the thickness, or it's only, the hair that's gonna be left behind is gonna be the thickness of the blade. So that's why if for anybody who may wonder, why is it that the hair is longer when you angle it? Well, it's because the teeth are longer. And there's more of a distance between the teeth and that cutting blade when you, when you angle it than when you lay it flat. Okay, so right in here, we're going to go ahead and put our comb in there. And we're just sculpting here. So the technique that I used earlier with the detailer, as far as soft line fading, okay, I do want to make it clear, it does work best on straighter hair, but you can use that technique on coarse hair as well. It does work. Is it going to leave the hair as blended as it did here today on this haircut? Most likely not, but it will make your job easier that if you use that technique over going around with the blade where you're just going in and putting that solid line in, it will make your job easier using the soft line fading technique that I showed you today over that other technique, which is a hard line fading technique. So definitely give it a shot. Try it out. Let me know what you guys think. Leave some comments. If you have any questions at all as to what I'm doing, please comment. I will be available to answer your questions. For those of you that are interesting, interested in purchasing tools, you can always go to wallpro.com. If you want to keep up with what we have, what we have going on, classes and things like that, visit us on Instagram under Wall Pro. If you want to check out some of my work, you can check me out on Instagram under New Style 84. So here we're just using a lot of angling. My, my clipper lever is all the way open. Sometimes I'm laying it flat where I'm seeing lines of demarcation. Other times I'm angling it to create a better blend. Okay, so here we're just doing some corner blending. I'm seeing little dark spots, so what I'm doing is I'm just putting the corner of the blade 
in the area where I see that dark spot. If I was to put the whole blade in and try to get that dark spot out, I'm going to put a whole line in. That's the reason why I only use the corner of the blade. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're just going down below and looking at little areas of demarcation. A dark spot here or there, and I'm just kind of using the corner of my blade to kind of just erase one spot at a time as I go. Angle the head downwards a little bit. I'm going to use a, a 90 degree angle to create a, a little bit of a better blend right here. Wait flat. So, so far on this side, you know, I haven't really had to do a whole lot because of the technique that I showed you earlier with the detailers. The detailers were able to do the majority of the blending for me. Flip over comb. So up above, we just need to make sure that we create a good head shape. On the sides of the head right here, you always want to make sure that you're creating good head shape. So we're going to do some sculpting. And it's best to use your mirror when you're doing this. Face your client toward the mirror. And then you'll glance over at the mirror so you can look at both sides of the head to make sure that there are no pieces sticking out. Making sure both sides are symmet sy uh, symmetrical to, to the other side. baby brush too that helps keep the hair wiped away you can always use the detail as you kind of go back as well just to kind of hit some spots that you may have missed that always helps to make it you know to get a little extra nice and polished to get that blend looking good go back and hit, hit some little spots to detailers okay here we're gonna go ahead and line the beard up Okay, up above, we're gonna place the blade on the skin and then just kind of press down right toward the line. You don't have to apply too much pressure. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and comb the bangs down and get a nice straight line right across. One thing that I find really easy so that you can double check your work when you're, you know, creating a nice front line is always double check your work in the mirror. Sometimes you can be standing in front of your client, you know, trying to line them up in the front with your trimmers and it might look straight to you, but as soon as you face them toward that mirror and you step behind them and look in the mirror, the mirror is going to show you things that you didn't notice when you were just looking at it with your eyes. So I've turned, him, I've turned him toward the mirror now, the mirror being this way, and I can see that this one right hand side right here corner needs to go up a tiny bit. I didn't notice that when I was standing right directly in front of him, I noticed it after I faced him toward the mirror. Try to do it dry, um, and like I said, if, if the bangs are laying down, you can just use trimmers versus, versus using your shears. So now that we've got everything detailed, let's go ahead and make, give them a little spin here just so you can kind of see what we got going on, how the fade's looking. One thing that I like to do is use my foil shaver, which is called the wall finale. So right at the bottom, when we use a foil shaver, it's gonna give our fade that much more of, of another dimension of just freshness. 
So right in here, I'm seeing a little bit of a shadowy area. So I'm gonna go up on that hair and we're gonna go with the grain to blend that in better. So again, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and comment below and I will be on to answer your questions. I hope, like, I hope you guys all like what you're seeing so far today. So we're gonna finish off his haircut now, putting a little bit of product in the top of his hair using the Wall 1919 Firm Hold Gel. Okay. I use about a pea size amount, not, not, a, not a lot amount, not a lot. We're just gonna kinda just rub it in there. So we're just gonna not add a lot of water to it. So what I did here was I added a little small amount to my hands and just kind of put it, just applied it throughout the hair on top just to give it a little bit of a texturized look. And there you have it. 